Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and a link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the Earth. If you do join, please don't swear if you do you'll be ejected and if you are please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts you'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream please also share the show as sharing the show increases the live audience of course and this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel so please please share the show and one last time if you are new to the channel or you have not done so already be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the flat earth debate now we are joined by arwin nummy and sleeping warrior how are you all doing gentlemen yeah. great how's, how's it going yeah doing good guess what it's sunny and blue outside again you're joined by ranty as well how are you doing ranty how do yeah all good are, you, are we actually live now yes we are indeed live please don't swear i have not had a notification funnily enough no me neither hmm so what have we got on screen, Arwin? Diffraction-induced optical slant giraffe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, uh, that's cleared that up. We're not on yet, are we? Well, uh, I'm basically making a series, I think. I seem to be coming up with all these uh, new animals that uh, involve the whole flat earth debate on both sides and uh, well since tim has been complaining so much about my optical slant ha 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 so i thought yeah you know what uh, a giraffe it's a very long neck so if any animal out there if they in fact have good eyes i am not too sure about that probably uh, yeah it will know it will know that you definitely see the slant and it moves as you move your head uh, so i thought diffraction induced optical slant giraffe excellent <clears throat> my favorite so far has been the presuppositional sphere hedgehog yeah it is the best <laughs> it's the cutest <laughs> yeah and i'm probably going to add a little bubble when it's saying i'm a sphere so the world must be a sphere indeed love it oh there you go you got it up i'll put it up <laughs> presuppositional sphere hedgehog absolutely love it yeah, it's cute. I just watched this amazing video. It was yeah. some guy called Ranty who did a, a video yesterday on Nathan Oakley's channel. Never heard of him. Put a presentation together. It was absolutely fantastic. It was good. Did I mirrored any... it. Did you see? Did... Sorry? Did you I snipped it out of the of yesterday's show and mirrored it on its own. I haven't done yet. But I will no, no, wait. I have. I have. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, I snipped yeah, I out just, your presentation from yesterday. comments in it as well. Um, <clears throat> I mean, do you have to allow all the comments? I mean, is that is that your, you know, you're just allowing everything to go? I mean, there's nothing about me. It's just something that they've said about your missus. I mean. Yeah, all comments. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be great if I was criticizing um, Flat Earth Math for removing my comment if I was just removing people's comments, you know. It's disgusting. The comments are the pits, but so what? That's 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 people that comment. That's not me. Yeah, true. <clears throat> you know, there comes a, a point though. At some point, there has to come a point when you say, "Okay, well, maybe you should try and expose these people." I don't think no, I just think comments though, right? I mean, they're exposing themselves in their comments for the most part. It just makes them uh, more encouraged. Mm. <clears throat> I think that, you know, the content of their comments is a document and record of their character and, and their uh, credibility in the argument over time. Straw man yeah. argument regurgitation cow. 
That's a new one. <laughs> yeah, it's eating a straw man. And you know that cows regurgitate. So <laughs> I don't think we have anything to be afraid of from the comments is really the point, right? Like they're not I don't think they're gonna change the momentum of the argument or the flat earth, the growth of the flat earth awareness through their trolley. Well, don't you think that it stops certain people from commenting? So let's suppose you had somebody that was uh, maybe wanting to leave a comment, but was frightened of doing so for getting the abuse that they would um, instantly get for making any kind of comment. Yeah, that's why we have offer hangouts. Them same people then come in and we chat like normal. So publicly, they might not pop comments, but privately, we're all there together, so it's fine. Well, it's the reality of the internet is that if you want to get involved, uh, it's a dirty place. And if you can't stomach it, even on that level, then what can you do, right? Yeah, like if let, 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 me, let me illustrate one of the examples of dirtiness in terms of this dirty place that we're in. You've got flat earth math that is literally ignoring the point that Nathan's making, which is, can you provide evidence of the R? He's literally obfuscating it with over excessive politeness because he's such a nice kind of guy, which is, his, that's his style. That's fine. But then you've got Tim saying how great it is that he's he's back and how, how we're all horrible people, yet he's one of the most disgusting people on the internet. Yet publicly, in his normal account, he's nice. But privately, he's one of the worst shills out there. He's one of the worst people for uh, doxing, like literally causing all the problems on the troll account, you can imagine. And he's that, that's down to him. And he's uh, publicly given this little aura of wonderfulness around him. And I'm thinking, yeah, you're disgusting. So I believe you did a Diotra yesterday. I haven't, I haven't actually seen your video, but I, I, I know the results because Nathan told me. Yeah, it's flat as fuck, mate. Was it a foot and a half or something? 1.49 feet it was, and that was over 144 feet's worth of distance. Really? Like, that long? Yeah, 144 feet, which is yeah, higher that, than that. That was the only feet. slight downside. I mean, it's good and it's bad because when you actually compare the two videos side by side, it's pretty clear that his actual observation was closer to the water than when he measured it at 144 feet. But all that would do is reduce the value from a foot and a half down to, well, let's call it about a foot. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can, yeah, it's semantical arguing. I mean, yeah, it's nitpicking. But the point is, math, flat earth maths, whatever, which way, you can argue it whichever way you want, but... It's got to get near to nine feet for flat earth. And at the end of the day, don't forget the bigger picture was we can see the floaty land from the Isle of Man from whatever observer height that turned out to be above water. Whether it be nine feet or one feet, it doesn't really make any difference. Let's not get distracted by the point at hand. We see an awful lot of land from the beach at an elevation of what? Call it 10, right? Let's call it 10 right. just for argument's sake. And none of that land is 700 feet behind the curve. Right. But, but look at it this way. Difference. When you say that you're trying to get, not get distracted for, for doing this, you still went away and you spent probably an hour and a half setting up that experiment to prove that you was at a foot and a half or a foot. No, no, no. no. I spent that time to discredit flat earth math, which was yeah, more I know, important than disproving it. No, well, listen. I, I know, I know I it's a semantical argument. No, no, no. no, no, no. I, I wasn't trying to prove him wrong. I was discrediting him on his, on his ability to apply maths and get a realistic... Um, yeah, but this is what they do. They, they do things, they throw something like this, even if it was nine feet or 90 feet. If it was 90 feet, you still wouldn't have seen it, right? So the point of the argument, whether it was nine feet or a foot, it really was irrelevant. You know? yeah, it's a total red herring. You're absolutely right. But what it does do is gives us an opportunity to take a piece of land that literally only today Charles is saying, have a little guess, estimate the height, here's the tools to use, the horizon, and how many pixels a child is. That's what he's doing. And we're saying, yeah. uh, no, it's been measured. What the hell are you doing? Yeah. And, and not I mean, only that, that in measuring it, in actually performing the measurement, we can show that he has engineered nine feet out of nothing. Yeah. And, and the, other thing, the other thing to consider as well is that the way the sand gets deposited on the beach is different every single time. And a lot of it's governed by how fierce the tide comes in the time before. So the tide will come in fierce and all the sand will be higher up the beach. If it comes in gentle and it's been a gentle tide, then all the sand will be deposited at the bottom of the beach. And that'll change the contour slightly, but noticeably you'd be able to measure it. Um, and that'll just change the perception. So, But the point is, the, the way the sand gets deposited on the beach is different every time. Yeah. The point is also it is important to expose flat earth math 
his disingenuousness because he has a reputation of being, you know, a fair and kind of genuine, nice sort of guy, right? When in fact he's a covert sophist. Yeah, he's like Ned Flanders. There's something imagine... weird about him. I like I I made some comments in his latest video where he replied to this, and I was pretty harsh. Like basically said, yeah, it was complete nonsense. But then he still replied, uh, besides the trolls, and said, yeah, thank you for sticking up for me. It was very nice. But you can do these experiments yourselves. It's almost like he's in this weird toddler position or something. Yeah, it's called... It's, like it's he called, is willingly ignorant. It's called the Ned Flanders effect. He's it's very, very, very weird. Yeah, things. a bit like Ned Flanders, indeed. It, it's very weird. Yeah. So he is a nice guy, but he seems just weird disingenuous no, i mean not no not in disingenuous just weird i think he's like polite to the point of passive aggression personally i don't think it's genuine yeah. i don't think you yeah, really could be shit about any of us or anything like that no he's definitely not passive aggressive he's polite no i know but it's like politeness to us brought to a certain pitch almost becomes a kind of passive aggression right like it's it almost like artistically polite yeah I think we're being a bit harsh on him. I think the guy's no, no, a nice hey, guy. He's still a nice yeah. guy, but he's just full of shit. Weird. <laughs> no, I don't think he's a nice guy. I don't think it's a nice guy is like lying and being disingenuous like that, right? Like I think oh, he's polite. using polite. that to enhance his so apparent credibility, but it's just like who cares? Who cares if he's polite? We're arguing a point. We're arguing about a specific subject here. We're not Trying to score brownie points with fucking being polite. Sorry, excuse me. Just to address Twitwit in chat, she says, uh, "Was your debunk video taken from the exact location of the original video? Of course, it wasn't. The tide was in a different place. The tide's in a similar part of the beach, but it can't be exact with it because it's the height above water that's important. It's not the exact location of it. So the answer to your question is no, because the tide's in a different place." If people want to go back and find a bit of beach that's got this massive nine foot of relief on it, then they're welcome to. You know, I've been across that beach. I've walked across it with my kids. Flat as a pancake, the whole thing. So, you know, if someone wants to go down to that beach and just measure it the same way Anthony does and, and actually demonstrate that there's any relief beyond about a foot, which is what we've said or what Anthony said, then be our guest. Go down, get a measurement, show how it isn't a foot of relief. It's nonsense. It's flat as a pancake. The thing is, if the tide comes in rough the tide before, then it'll be deposited um, high up at the beach. If it comes in gentle, it'll be deposited low down at the beach, and that will affect the way that the perception of tilt is is appreciated. But on average, it'll be virtually flat. I mean, it's going to be it's, like I said, you can have a foot, but you certainly can't have nine foot. But sometimes you'll get less than a foot. Sometimes you'll get more than a foot. It depends on how rough the tide was when it first came in, uh, or sorry, when the tide came in prior. But in any event, it's nowhere near nine feet. So even if I was out, I mean, I'm happy to say, yeah, yeah, all right, then I was out by six inches over the foot and a half that I said. I said a foot, it turned out to be a foot and a half. I don't mind being out by six inches over 140 feet. But to be out by eight foot, seven and a half feet, when you've calculated it with maths, is more telling than me guessing it based on my perception at the time. So you guys have used all the maths and you've all basically hold each, held each other's willies in a circle while you all said, well, Flat Earth Math has explained it with maths. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not real world. And that's the point. It isn't real world. Yeah, it might sound pretty with the maths. And I noticed that when he did do the maths on screen, he didn't actually did it, do it at the right. He didn't do it at the horizon. He did it somewhere else other than the horizon, which looked like a cloud. Um, just look at it. Just look at the way he's done his maths. Um, but in any event, yeah, just because it looks credible and it looks like it's good, don't make it real. That's the point. And we can almost look at all this obfuscation as an admission of the fact that if what you say is true, that it was only a foot and a half, that that would not really be explainable according to their model. No. So they're just avoiding, they're avoiding dealing with the facts, right? Like they're just trying to say, oh no, it was more, it was higher elevation or something like that. But really it's just because they know that if they actually had to deal with the evidence that's before them that they're not going to be able to say anything or they're going to have to make up a whole new obfuscation tactic some uh, let, let me address this 
let me address this nonsense that they were, um, that people are picking up on, which is the head being above or below the horizon. This is completely and utterly red herring because that head being above the horizon is governed entirely by the proximity of the observer relative to the target. So, for example, if you have a child and an adult at the same distance away from you, the child's head will be below the horizon, then the adult's head will be above the horizon, right? But if you move that adult back further away towards the horizon, because the horizon is 34 miles away and it's not three miles away, he will disappear quicker at a quicker rate while he disappears because he's close to you than the horizon. Then, and, and what he'll do is he'll start to shrink below the horizon because he's getting he's getting closer to the horizon, but he's getting smaller from an angular perspective point of view from you. So he will start to shrink as he gets towards the horizon, but overall his feet will start to rise to the horizon. But because he's close to you, he's going to shrink quicker than the rate that his feet rise towards the horizon because of perspective. So it depends on how close the, prox the proximal relationship is between you and the target. And if they're right on top of you, yeah, you can see that the, head, the children's heads can appear above the horizon as well. But as you move further back, that that, that does, that's not that doesn't uh, maintain to be true. It's to do with um, a proximal relationship between you and the target, and that target's height relative to you. So it's it's to do with proximity. It's not to do with um, this math nonsense that math was talking about. It's ridiculous. Right. Can you guys see my screen? The sunset thing. Yes. What would you describe the sun as doing right now? I would say what sun? Oh, hang on. Wow, well, yeah, that really looks like it's... Oh, you mean the changing of the angular size? But you've not got a sun filter on, man. <clears throat> so would you say that sun there is the same size as that sun there? It's just the glare, man. Just the glare. Put a sun filter on it. It's the same. Okay, just just to get that clear. I was very un I was just misunderstanding. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Can you hear us, Josh? He's gone. Was he kicked? Hello. He was kicked. He was kicked. He was Why? It's Josh. Yeah, but you gotta be careful, Nate, because we just don't know who they are at the minute. Unless they speak up the minute they join, so that we know that because we can tell whose voices they are, right? Uh, he was in the chat yeah. saying, "I suppose we don't know if it's a real Joshua. Could be a fake one." Flat hey, got a new one. <laughs> Flat question says, "Sleeping warrior, show these two still side by side and tell us which one is further away from the waterline and which one is nearer." 1.54 in the new and 4.16 in the... I need to overlay it. I'll get Geo... <coughs> Tell you what, flat questions. To ask GeoStreamer to overlay it and make a GIF out of it. Sure, he'd happily oblige. I'm not going to bother doing that because it won't be considered to be... You need to get a, a ball earther to do that and then let them challenge it that way because if I do it, I'll have done something wrong. So no is the answer. Not because I don't want to do it, but I think it's a ball earther surgeon to make, not a flat earther... Um, debunk to debunk himself on. That was the real Josh. Sorry, Josh, you got booted for just not saying hello quick enough. Sorry. How do you know it was the real Josh? Bitwit presumably clicked on his icon and checked it was him, but she assures us it was the real Josh. I don't know how Twitter would how Twitter would know that that was the real Josh. You're really muffled, by the way, Anthony. I don't know what you've done with your mic, but it's gone from being quite good to being pretty naff for this most of the show. Is that any better? Yeah. I had it off axis. Yeah, it just wasn't really picking you up. It was all muffled. Oh, yeah. So Lenny Harry says, just bad camera work, but Lily knows all about bad camera work. Yeah, well, I'll tell you something. Go and get a P900, zoom in on anything, and then you try and keep it still, even on a tripod. Ranty uses a tripod. Granted, it's not the best tripod in the world, and I'm sure he's the first to admit it, but it looks like he's freestyling it, and he's not. He's on a tripod. You, tr you try and get a, a P900 and zoom right in on something and try and keep it still. You can feel the blood in your fingers that are altering what's going on, so I don't accept any of the criticisms against the, um, the, the quality of the camera. I think the quality of the camera works fantastic. I bet I could you do it by hand. I wouldn't even need a tripod. 
<laughs> is that because you're so smooth? Yeah, just because I'm basically ace. <laughs> He's got gyroscopes in his fingertips. Yeah, man. What? How difficult can it be? <laughs> oh. Oh, Sorry, I'm, I'm being so facetious. I know how difficult it is. Ma- massive credit to you two because I, I know actually how difficult it is. And it is incredibly hard. You're right. Getting those sorts of shots is hard. You know, otherwise there'd be loads of them. You need a gyroscopic stabilization system to actually really steady out those uh, extremely distant telephoto shots. Yeah, and I'm not prepared to buy a 300 quid tripod for a flat earth thing. What, what are you seeing? Sure when, knows which is crowdfunded it because it's like when you see the, the pan that Anthony does when it when it jumps, what you're actually seeing is the blood pulsing through his fingers as he holds the tripod. That's what you're actually seeing happen. Generally, yeah. Well, what, on the what you're also forgetting as well is when you every time you zoom in further, the camera is getting longer, so the weight is being pushed to the front of the camera. So as it as it extends. Um, it's like one of those old uh, telescopes, you know, that they used to have on on boats. You know, you can sort of like pull them apart. You spin three levers. Well, that's just how the P nine hundred works. It's quite compact, but when the actual zoom lens is is pushing itself out, all that weight is going to the front of the camera, so it's pulling it down. Yeah, the so, center of mass changes as the thing elongates. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it is quite difficult to try and. Um, you know, get a nice steady image to start with. But well, once you've got it in, it's all right. I think Anthony's did, did all right looking uh, across that horizon. To be honest, I mean, you've got, you got someone in chat now saying uh, buying cheap equipment and getting cheap results. Um, well, put it this way. It's not cheap equipment. They're like 500 quid, P900. And even if it was considered to be cheap results or rubbish results, it's better than what you can do. So if you think you can do any better, go and get some flat earth evidence, uh, some ball earth evidence. <laughs> show us that curve, man. Because we're all trying to do it and none of us are getting any of that curve. So how hard is it really? I mean, it should be, it's, it is, like, this is the thing that ball earthers forget, right? They argue that the, the size of the earth is so big that you can't see any curvature, yet boats seem to go over the horizon and improve curve. Well, if boats are going over the horizon, then we can see this curve, right? And nobody seems to be doing it. So why is that? Is it weird refla- refraction all the time? And it just happens to be perfect every time a flat earther goes out? Or is it just not curved and we're not seeing this repeatable, observable, demonstrable six, uh, eight inches per mile squared? And it appears to be that everybody's doing it. No, uh, Lenny's just put, yes, it is cheap. Uh, no, talk is cheap, Lenny. Because all you guys do is just talk. You've got a keyboard and you just chatter away. Whereas guys like myself, Anthony, and all the other people that are going out and doing independent research with a P900, they've put money into it, they've put time into it, they put effort into it. Whereas you guys just sit there and tap away on your keyboard thinking that you're some kind of hero. Well, you're not. All right, so Ranty, Dr. Wah is trying to try and get back in. So don't kick him out straight away. Okay. Make, make sure you speak. Josh, if you do join, because that is the most important thing. Because the... Although then again, I'm saying that Matt Taylor's out doing his paper round at the moment, so he's not likely to be back yet. Oh no, he'll be back now, it's two o'clock. Hey Nathan, can you yes. present me for a second? Got something new. Uh, what's this? Let's have a look. Scientific consensus dogmatism donkey. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> That's great. I love it. That's Mark Taylor. Yeah, probably sounds like him too. <laughs> Handsome lad. Handsome donkey. Guy sounds like drool. The funny thing is, there you got Lenny Henry that cl- that claims that, um, oh yeah, it's cheap kit, this, that, and the other, and then he said his comment is, "Oh, Alan B's in." Hello, boys. Wow, you're loud. Hello, Hello Alan. Alan. Anybody got an ice cream? If you've got two ice creams, yeah, I do, actually. Yeah, so he says um, it is cheap photography equipment. A decent prime lens, a, a decent prime tele lens is a grand plus. You bunch of goofs. Yeah, and if 
He's if you want to lens. take one, why don't they go and spend a grand and do it? Well, hang on, I, I've got like an 1800 quid prime lens, telephoto lens, right? And the picture quality is fantastic. When it comes to zoom, it's ridiculous. Tony, so it's, Tony, bit yeah. of a mistake there. Prime What's lenses that? don't have zoom on. I've got four or five lenses that have all got different levels of zoom on them and they're all considered to be telephotographic and they're all considered uh, Well, to be... by definition, that's not a prime lens. A prime lens no, is he's, he's saying focal. he's got different lenses of different length zoom. So he's not the saying that is... they zoom. He called them a prime lens. I didn't. Lenny did. Lenny oh. called them. A, he said a decent prime tele lens. So he's saying that it's a decent prime tele lens. That's incorrect. Well, his point is that they're a grand plus and I've got numerous ones. None of them are as any good as the P900. So you either spend thousands on lenses that are great at what they do, but not be very good at telephotos, or you get a P900 that smashes the, all the other lenses that I've come across. Hasn't, you, hasn't your wife got a few nickels? Yeah, she's got a few of them, yeah. She's got more, spent a lot of money on camera uh, photography equipment. Well, surely the um, 150 to 600 mil is, is better than the um, P900. No, nowhere near. It's a quarter of it. The picture, quality, the, the picture quality is better and the resolution is better, but the zoom is nowhere near as good. So it's not it's not Matt Taylor's fault that I'm poor and has cheap equipment or get poor results. You don't know what a prime lens is, you idiot. Well, I was quoting what you'd said. It was Alan B that corrected you, thinking it was me. You're so talking to I'm Mike. I'm telling you what you said. You're off axis again. Hello, Josh. Good to have you. Can you hear us? Hello. 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 Oh, I made it in. Yeah, yeah. you're I in. Made it. Hello. Tiny, tiny bit, sense of Lenny. Tiny. Quiet, but... Oh, sorry, quiet. No, no, I can sort that, don't worry. Copy that. You sound like an Australian or a New Zealander. No, I am Anthony. I am an Australian. And actually, you may remember me. Last time I came on, I wanted to talk about uh, bombs and war and the way that man's been engineering horrible weapons to hurt each other. But I do remember, yeah. This time, this time, I'm just going to ask this kind of simple thing. This simple thing to everyone there is that if you had a special favourite chair, just a favourite chair that you could sit down on and look at the stars at night so you're just sitting in your favorite chair at your favorite house and you just look at the stars did you know that every single year when a whole year passes it's going to be exactly the same what you're looking at yep well technically Does... on the heliocentric model it's not exactly the same well no no, no. let's just let's, let's talk about what the eye can even really differentiate like you know what you know like if if there was if you've got like a, a thing on your house uh, like an ornament or something dangling off the roof and there was a star right next to it a year later that we all agree that that it, we're going to be looking at the same sky right yeah i agree and and does that happen everywhere on earth i don't know yeah probably yeah it does Ah, oh, okay, cool. Well, uh, I guess that's kind of my gotcha, because you all just proved a spherical Earth. How so? It would take twenty-four thousand years to get back to the same place on the on the with the great the great year cycle, right? What? Let, let's yeah. just like I want this guy to explain exactly how he comes to the logical conclusion from that observation that we must be on a globe. Because you, you're just saying like, oh, we see that, so therefore it's a globe. But can you actually explain all the logical deductions? Or I think I know what this is. Yeah, I know, but let's let him say it. I think it's this. <laughs> uh, sure. I, I I don't know how you've got me because I've already just got you. So it's yeah, all good. I'm not claiming no, to get. I'm not to oh, well, okay. Okay. Next backup question then. So if you guys think that no, no, every no. sorry, Josh, Josh, Josh just like... bear with us a second. So what is what is asking you, Josh, is to go through the example again and explain how you've drawn the conclusion from your example using the stars and their year-long cycle. How you come to the conclusion that we're on a sphere based on that information. You're acting like it's obvious or something, but I just want you to explain how it is that those observations definitively prove or, that 
in the alternative, if I just say, well, you've just proved a flat plane, how would you prove that it's not flat and it's spherical on the basis of what you just said? Uh, but but you, you guys know that you can't, uh, from like the equator, that's where you stop seeing Polaris. You, you, you know that. That's a fact, right? That's not true. There's evidence that says that you can see Polaris as far down south as the Tropic of Capricorn. Oh, right. come on, Anthony. Like, show, show me that. Sorry, do you really think that, Josh, that you can stop seeing Polaris at the equator? Yeah. Have you actually done it? Uh, well, well, no, no, but I'm in the southern hemisphere now. No, I've done it. I can't you can see still Polaris. see Polaris at the equator. Did you not know that? <laughs> Polaris can be seen below the equator. Could you to... please show me? Could you please just back up? Yeah, I'm, I, d that I don't want to. What I'm, I'm asking is, were you weren't aware of this? And the answer is yes. You You've not checked that? it. You're just asserting it. Like you get to the equator and you can't see Polaris anymore. Well, hang on. I'm not saying it now. Now we've gone over to Anthony. He just said that he can see it at the Tropic of Capricorn. Please show the, all the audience that data, Anthony. Well, why don't you show it that you can see it? Well. It's actually more Anthony's claim to make that, uh, 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 sorry, troll attack. It's more Anthony's assertion. But we're getting past the assertion that you made to begin with, which is that it in any way proves you're on a sphere, Josh. So that's what Nummy asked you to sort of take us through the steps of. He's not trying to get you. He's just trying to say, how do you draw that conclusion from what you've said? Now we're into debating whether or not you can see Polaris, which is kind of off on a sidetrack. Yeah, like you've you've claimed to have made some kind of point, right? But you've skipped over the actual argument part. Yeah. I think, I think you'll find Anthony made the claim there. No. no. I asked, how was it you managed to say that we live in a ball? If I said that the Earth's flat and you just proved it, but he's saying that the Earth's a ball and we've just proved it, how do you distinguish between the two models? This is why I didn't want to get ahead of the get too ahead of this. I, I mean, this guy has made an assertion, and, but he hasn't explained his argument, his logic, the, the logic of how he reached his conclusion, right? Well, just... I can I can pretty much fill that in. That is no, what no, they all do. Win. They no, all do the same thing. thing. Hold no, on, no, Arwen. We want to hear Josh. Hold on, Arwin. Arwin. Josh was the one who made the assertion, so we want to hear Josh explain it. All right. Come on, Josh. Explain whenever it. You, whenever you're ready, Josh. He's muted. For some reason and yes no sorry about that ja jamie dreary keeps muting me i don't know who that yeah, is he's a troll uh copy that We're kicking um, sorry and uh I'll, I'll get back to what i said but just quickly anthony did make the um uh the uh, assertion that you can see no, polaris from the you. tropic yeah. of capricorn no 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 let's and... just go back to what you said first okay because we don't want to get everything all mixed up here and we'll, we'll deal with that no, after that hey hey i'm not mixed up i just know that anthony said you can see polaris on the tropic of capricorn but it makes no yeah, difference to yeah, but you proof. said that, so, that proof oh, that oh, on a what we're interested in is hearing oh. how you prove what you've got to prove and in this instance you're saying that this observation proves a sphere and i want to know how you come to that okay. conclusion same I, as nummy yep. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. Really, if you just give me a moment, I'm on it. So we just had an admission from all of you guys that if you were sitting in your comfiest chair and you looked out every year, you would see the same stars. And that happens all over the Earth. Yeah. And that means well, geometrically that it is a sphere. The ge saying Sorry. geometrically, that's a presupposition. <laughs> so you're saying as so long as we accept that it's a sphere, then that proves it's a sphere. That is the definition of a presuppositional argument. Uh, no, 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 no. What it is is that because what, what what you've just claimed by saying that you're in the chair seeing the same stars, that means what you're actually saying, and maybe I've got another gotcha here, but that means that you can use those stars to triangulate where that chair is. So that's the way sailors have been sailing around the world for years, is using the stars to pinpoint where they are on the planet. They, okay. they use the angular relations. Okay, so how do you get from there to being on a sphere? You're muted, muted again, again, Josh. Sorry. Sorry, there's another guy. There's Bob, yeah, Bob, it's, the Bob, same, it's the same guy. The troll. Bob Bobby. So how, how do you um, get from that observation in your chair, seeing that the stars go round cyclically, how do you draw the conclusion that you're on a sphere from that or navigation? Well, well, because Nathan, where that those stars, where they are, they triangulate your position. Yeah, I got that. And right now, 
It, well, right now, I'm in the Southern Hemisphere, and you and I can see so that's a, that's a presupposition. different stars, Nathan. So you, you're saying I'm in the Southern stars. Hemisphere. That's a presupposition. So you're already saying to me, I'm on the bottom of a sphere before you give your example. So that's called a presupposition. Well, I, okay, sure. Sure. I see a completely different night sky to you. But as we approach, as both of us approach the equator, the stars will actually get the same, 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 same until we meet in the middle and then we're both seeing the same stars. Okay. So if I'm in a corridor in a hotel, right, and the corridor is three miles long and all the way along it are lights of very slightly different colours going all the way down the spectrum from blue to red. As I walk down that corridor, I will see different lights that are in the distance and beyond my view initially when I get to that end of that corridor. And if you're walking in the opposite direction along that corridor, you'll have the exact same effect. It in absolutely no way defines the floor of the corridor. That, that was a pretty bad example, Nathan, because you started out with a presupposition that the corridor was flat. Well, do you know what a corridor is? Have you ever been in a corridor? Hang on a minute. Yeah, but do you know what a presupposition is? Because you just presupposed that the corridor was flat. Hang on. That was the first thing you hang said. On. That we're on. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, I'm describing the same effect Dead. by pointing out that it doesn't actually prove we're on a sphere. So I've given the converse example and had the same light effect in the sky replicated. So it in no way defines the ground, your example or my example. Uh, well, yeah, no, it doesn't need to define the ground because we're on the ground. That's... It does. You're saying it proves we're on a sphere if I sit in my really comfy chair, right? And I look up at the stars and I can tri triangulate my position and people have used them for navigation. Then we're trying to get to the bit between there and the sphere bit, but we haven't got there yet. Uh, well, well, I guess you haven't got there yet, but... The... Oh, well, you just presuppose it. So you say, I'm in the Southern Hemisphere. So you are working under a presupposition that you're already on a sphere, Josh. Do you understand no, no, that? I'm... Well, clearly you don't understand that when you're literally saying to me that you're in the Southern Hemisphere. I, I, got... I got muted again. That you've yeah, got it's you've the got... same guy. It's going to be the same guy. He's muting you, so just... He's desperate. He desperately doesn't want you to reveal that your argument is presuppositional. Oh, well, hang on, but Nathan's counter-argument was presuppositional that yes, we're in a corridor. Yes, and the complete opposite of your presuppositional argument using the same light show in the sky. But his well, argument is not actually presuppositional because he's just giving an example, right? Like, that isn't making an assumption about the shape of the Earth, say, as a fact. So it's not really a presuppositional if, argument. If he tells you that the corridor is flat, that's actually a statement of fact, not a presupposition. My point was I can achieve the same light display. But you actually can't, Nathan. Like, well, <laughs> I, you just said that we were walking towards each other on a flat corridor. That's That's got nothing to do with the, what we actually see out of it. If you were to walk outside right now, and I were to walk outside right now, we can see a completely different set of stars. Not really. Well, we you can probably see because you're in the daytime, right? We can see Orion and you can see Orion. That's not true. You can't see stars in the daytime. No, we, we barely ever see Orion down here. Orion. So can we. You muted it again, by the way. Yeah, this is what it boils down to now. Rather than muting us, it's muting the people that make the ball earth look bad. As they make yeah. terrible, terrible arguments. For the yeah, I've got, I got. Sorry, I got muted again. I got to keep on top of this. Um, Anthony, why would you pick Orion, which we know is on the uh, east-west kind of vibe of our planet? Why because would you not use, say, the Southern Cross and Polaris? <clears throat> so you said planet again. So that would be again you inserting a presupposition. Uh, why would you not use the Southern Cross? Do you understand that as a train goes far enough away from you, eventually it goes that close to the horizon and it disappears what you would call behind the curve, but what I would say is out of a proximal relationship to you, and you can no longer see it again because it's too small and it's too far away. Why would you expect me to be able to see Southern Cross from England? Well, oh, I would expect that you can't see it because it's underneath the planet is in the way. Right, but that's, that's again, that's another presupposition that we're on a planet, isn't it? Because in no way between the star observation... And you saying, because it's underneath the planet, 
Has there been any evidence whatsoever that suggests that to be the case? You just insert it as a presupposition. Yeah, you don't know that they are even the... physical objects. You have no proof of this. There's, yeah. a, there's a light show. Oh, Alwyn, turn it. There's a light it. show. There's a sure. specific hey, Alwyn. angular hey, Alwyn, pattern. Do you remember this? Well, yeah. you were from I've the Netherlands, right? Many, do you remember many this? Times. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Yeah. That's like, that's like a rhyme you learn in like primary school. And that's you right now. Your primary school. Yeah. You, uh, you know how in that, really you know how in that little riddle, they actually don't give you the answer? Hmm? <laughs> that's true. Why that would that be? Why would that be? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Oh, it's yeah. burning a uh, ball well, of hydrogen. What's the rest you know, of the line? Like Sorry, no, he, okay. he just added on to that twinkle, twinkle rhyme. He just added up that it was a balling, burning light, right? That's what he just added into that nursery rhyme. Yeah. Do you have any evidence? Uh, I, that, do you have any evidence that a star is a burning ball of hydrogen? Hey, um, it doesn't matter. Do you know what I truly okay. believe? Uh, they, right. are all, they are all yeah. Simba's souls and Simba's brethren's souls. Every one of every star out there is a lion that used to be a king. I'll buy that as much as I'll buy that they're a burning ball of hydrogen. Equally as likely, as far as I'm concerned. There you go. But see, what 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 you guys aren't recognizing is that I this was the first question I asked you, and what was the first question that I asked you that you all actually agreed to, including you, Arwen. Yeah, but do you understand that the answer no, to please that? Please is... just say it. If you were sitting on a chair, that once a year you would see the same set of stars. You we're happy with because agree there is that. A very we well defined it. angular relations of the star the star patterns and all the heavenly bodies. So, Arwen, there, it doesn't there is matter no what they are. Right. There, there is, is a no heavenly defined of angular physicality. Relation. There Josh. is no proof of physicality. How many Josh. times do I need to repeat myself here? Let, Arwen, let you agreed that it doesn't matter what they are, but they always have the same angular relationship, whatever yes, that means. Exactly. You agreed to that. Yeah. So, it, that so is why how are you arguing is that it matters that is how what they, they navigate are. through Josh. the map of the stars? That's exactly what I'm yeah, saying, yeah. Arwen. It doesn't mean it's physical. It doesn't mean it's a physical object, that it's literally a round thing uh, over a round globe. You can make that work on a flat Earth just as well. And we Go on then, Arwen. I dare you and I challenge you to make the stars work on a flat Earth. But it doesn't oh, yeah. matter if he can or he can't. He doesn't need his own just-so story to pummel the living daylights out of your presupposition. And so far, we've had you sit in your chair, you look at the lights, and then you basically just decide you're on a globe and the stuff goes underneath you. Well, that's garbage. Yeah. It doesn't have to come up with an explanation for how they work to make your explanation look rubbish. No, but Nathan, you, you know you have to at some point, right? Like, you can keep taking long-distance photography no, for years to come. No, 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 but... you don't. You don't have to come up with a just-so story. That's not necessary. Totally superfluous to requirements, in fact. Just so stories are the reason we're in the situation we're in right now with people like yourself using arguments about the stars and simply presupposing they're on a ball. Yeah, we don't need scientism. We don't need a model. A model is a religion. We don't, we don't need a model. A model is a religion. It, it doesn't What's help. What's funny anymore. is that you flat earthers, you actually don't have any imagination. Oh, what? You've got a lot Sorry. of imagination. Not, have you, you talking have you about my model? Is that really what this comes down to? How much imagination we have? That's that's the problem that I'm looking at. That somebody somewhere has imagined the world that we live in and then come up with the mathematics to support their imagination. And you buy the mathematics completely. Well, I'm not interested in mathematics and just so stories. Imagination's got nothing to do with it when you're testing cause and effect relationships. That's got sod all to do with imagination, I'm afraid. Fairy tales, basically. So does anyone here acknowledge the existence of the Southern Cross? Yeah. Yes. And the fact that you can't see it from anywhere above, or in your language, the interior of the equator. No, that's not true. You can see the Southern oh, Cross. Anthony, oh, Anthony, sorry, back to where you were. Please provide the evidence you can see Polaris from the Tropic of Capricorn. Right, even on your model, would you agree that if if the Southern Cross was um, at, is it sixty degrees? Forget, forget, forgive me. I might be it might be seventy, but the Southern Cross is either sixty or seventy degrees, right? You wouldn't on your model be expected to not see it beyond the equator. 
you would expect to see it beyond the equator because you're not at the South Pole, correct? I, I, we're talking about, oh, sorry, I was talking about your claim before, your assertion before about Polaris being seen from the no, Tropic of Capricorn. You were just asking me, why would you expect to see the Southern Cross above the equator? But on your model, you would, because it's not at the South Pole, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. But, but, right. but so then you can exactly retract your previous statement then. Sure, you, you win, Anthony, but your exact right. reasoning is my question to you. Could you please provide the evidence that someone has seen Polaris at the Tropic of Capricorn? All right, so I'm sure there's numerous flat earthers out there right now. Let's all find this information for the retard that has no evidence for his assertion in the first place, other than a presupposition. Let's find the um, the references from we're navigation. We're on a red herring chase to nothing. Have... None of what we will find will find proof of the sphericity of Earth or Earth's flatness. Whereas the whole point of this conversation, the starting point, was Josh asserting that you look at the stars and decide you're on a sphere. Yeah, it, uh, sounded, it kind of sounded the same like dropping a mic and then say this proves gravitational right. pull. You still haven't explained how you got there. Exactly. You're so, still struggling no, to understand no, like, how you look at the stars Nathan, and come to the conclusion Nathan, on a sphere, Josh. Oh, Nathan, I know that you've seen that video that I did years ago trying to figure out how the southern stars can work on a flat earth. I tried. I was a flat earther for, I reckon, about a week. And I tried tried so hard i thought it was the coolest but it's impossible and and if you guys don't actually like get that then then i guess you'll just never get it just because you fail to model it doesn't make it impossible number one and number two it absolutely doesn't make it a sphere Makes yeah, but globe of the heaven. What, what i'm saying is that at some point you project. guys are going to have to figure this out you can't yeah, just keep maybe. taking long distance we photos. We want to figure it out, maybe. but we don't really have the resources uh, to do it. But, right. But what do you the mean? first problem, Josh, is that we have the whole body of science behind a nonsense just so story, and everybody backs it with presupposition. So the first step to correcting that is to topple that. In other words, prove that it's wrong, prove that it's incorrect. And we don't need just so stories in order to prove where the heliocentric system does not work. We just have to prove it incorrect. Eventually, with a bit of luck, we might get science on our side. Then, yeah, maybe with 2,000 years, we'll do a bit better than a just so story. And we've already proved that their model is not consistent internally, that there's logical inconsistencies within the model that's been presented to us. So in other words, we've already debunked the model as it's been presented by conventional science. To be so fair, though, you've only it, proved that in your what? mind. What? To be fair, though, you've only mind. proved that in your mind. No well, who, whose mind am I supposed to prove it in? Well, you've, you've got no evidence and you've got nothing. All you do that's is not, insult That's not me. true. I've said, I've, what I'm saying is that I've compared the evidence that's been presented and no, shown it's not logically consistent. No, you haven't. You just insult yes, I have. I've, them. I've wrong. What I've been doing for the last three weeks every day on this show. Could, yes. could you just say one, Nummy? Well, like, what's your one thing that doesn't work? Well, for well, one, there is no evidence of the there's there's no evidence that the Earth is rotating, and there's no evidence that the atmosphere is rotating with the Earth as it would have to be in order for what we see around us to make any kind of sense. And there's no viable physical mechanism that's describable that would explain how the cause of the atmosphere rotating supposedly with the earth the so know and at the same time there is a mechanism that actually proves the opposite it's called yeah, the there's a total lack of observational coriolis effect which would <laughs> a vacuum existing next to a pressurized environment without a membrane yeah, these are these. This is the really, really strong evidence that completely blows the model that we've been presented with clean out of the water. Like, hey, hey, Anthony, Anthony, I don't think you should talk until you come up with um, proof that you can see Polaris from the Tropic of Capricorn. It well, makes I'm, no you asked difference me... to the shape of the Earth beneath your feet. This this star observation proves nothing. So let's say Anthony's got it completely wrong. It makes absolutely no difference to your assertion that you can look at the stars and come to the conclusion or a sphere, which you can't. 
<coughs> you have no proof of their physicality. You have no proof other than angular relations in uh, relation to the position of the Earth, whatever the <laughs> shape may be. And that is all you got. Josh, Josh. Um, Alan. Arwin, Arwin believes Alan. the sun, the moon, and the stars are projections. No, I wouldn't call them projections. I would call them holographic, light-based, non-physical, literal. Yeah, but Arwen, let's just be clear. Like you don't believe that. That's just an idea that you think is possible, right? You're not dog. You're not dogmatically attached to that idea. That's just something that you consider to be a a, a possibility. I am above ninety percent sure that they are non-physical in but nature. Not Whatever we get to see, there may be some kind of reflective origin that suggests it as a causal relation. But other than that, what we actually see is absolutely non-physical. I'm pretty you're damn certain of it. The fact, right? You're you're still open to the idea that there something else could be. Well, there has it's there should be something causing it. I don't know what it is, but what yeah, we know, actually what see I'm saying is that you're the, not saying the you're, cause of us seeing it is not it being physical. You see that, Arwen? You see that, Arwen? Numpty's trying to silence you. No, I'm not. Go on. Keep talking, Arwen. No. Yeah, but uh, Arwen, do, do you not hear the contradiction in the, uh, in what you're saying? You're contradicting yourself. You're saying that they are angular and you can find the exact spots of where they are and they can triangulate to the chair, to your comfy chair, once a year. But, no, but that's, no, that's not enough. No, no, but it's not, no, no, no. Triangulation is a wrong application. You can in, just in order... get the angular relations, but triang actual triangulations require either a size or an exact distance, and you need confirmation of that. Otherwise, but, you only but, have no, 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 deductions no, no, no. based on the angular relation. More but, important, Alex, no, no, no. Alex, it's the it's supposition done. of the shape of the Earth. No, that before you go on. No, 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 Nami, stop talking through me, man. I'm not talking through you. Yeah, I'm you trying are. To I was explaining and you started talking through me. It's very okay. annoying. I'm sorry. But Josh, I just wanted to say that when you're making these triangulations, you are going to have to assume whether the earth, what the shape of the earth is in order to make the triangulation. Like you're no, not going to. No, 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 I don't. I don't. I, I'm literally just saying that if you're all sitting in your comfy chair every time in the year, if you just pick two stars and you point one finger at one star, and the other finger and another star that will happen at the exact same time a year later yeah but that's not triangulation the, I, I just made a triangle how is that not triangulation? Yeah, there's more to a triangulation than making a triangle and i just <laughs> explained it to you you have to have a literal size or a literal distance otherwise you're just going to compare angular relations Correct. With a presumption, a presupposition of the shape of the Earth. Hey, Arwen, what do you think? What do you think an angular relationship to do with a triangle is shortened down to in the English language? A scale. Well, when you have an actual confirmation of the size or the distance, so how about an exact thing? Then it works on the Earth because you can actually confirm the real size or the distance. Then you can get real triangulation. But if you're going to do it with a heavenly body, uh, okay, okay, then so you have to do a presumption. Okay, Otherwise, sure, Arwen. So just quickly, just are, you, are you going back on what you said earlier about sitting in the chair and seeing the same star at the same time? Yeah, no, are you, I'm are not. You, I'm, I'm just giving back. a more elaborate explanation as to what it is you're doing. So you're saying that if, if you pointed one of your left hand, you pointed a star. Your right I hand get it. pointed I get at it. another They're star. They're at the same position, apparent position, by the way. They're at the same angular position every time. But that's not that's There's not an enough. There's angular consistency with the heavenly that's bodies right. and the position of the Earth and the time span. Right. That's I'm what well triangulation. That's not what triangulation entails. What yeah. you're triangulation is about literal sizes, positions. That is what triangulation really is about. You don't think triangulation is making a triangle? It it's is about knowing the distance and it knowing the shape of the one of the angle, one of the distances between your two points, which you would have, you would put on a ball, right? But then if you do the same set of maths, no, 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 yes, no, yes, that's no, how no, no, yeah, all, all of you're just saying all that stuff. I'm just saying making a triangle. You're one point of the triangle, one star, 
the other star the other two points of the triangle. Yeah, yeah but you don't know the triangle. literal distance. Yeah, so but how do you even know what you don't know one distance. point of the triangle really is? You don't know because you're assuming it's in a literal I'm, position. I'm, assuming, I'm, I'm making a triangle. I'm not talking about distance. I never so said distance. But let me ask you, when you make your triangle, right, and you're going to pick, say, for example, Sydney and, and Canberra, and then you look at a star and you get your two no, angles. Between... Why? Now you're just making that up. I, I'm i trying to talk about sitting in a comfy chair looking at two stars. That's it. No other no other places on the planet. You All cannot right. do a triangulate, triangulation from such a position. You'd have to move your chair somewhere else. Right. Let, let me ask you two questions. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you know what the I'm probably going to butcher the name of this and someone can can correct me but do you know what the Sigma anti counters. No, do you know what the no. Antikytherian machine is? The anti what? The Antikytherian machine. No, go on. It's a mechanical construct that is representing all of the celest the main celestial bodies so like the planets, moon, anything that floats around in the sky, not specifically the stars, but the planets and the, and the uh, sun and the movements of the celestial bodies. But it's ah, so you, you mean like, you mean like old school Stellarian? No, I mean like cogs, actual, a clock, like a clock. Well, yeah, old school Stellarian. Okay, you can call it that if you wish. But do you understand that if you can make a mechanical construct and you make it from a flat plane perspective, then that would also be an explanation for why the stars could actually be A, flat, and B, we can see them on a flat plane because the Antikythera machine works. Do you understand that? Yeah, but you just said if, and, and, and I've heard you go on and on about if you've had two bananas and you ate a banana, how many something, something. If I made a construct that modelled it absolutely, would it be a model? Yeah, it would. But you just said if, and right. you got to do the, the two. You got to make the model. You're arguing it from an alternative perspective, but making the same point. Yet the Antikythera machine proves that it can be done on a flat plane and mechanical. So if your position is that it therefore is a ball, well, there is evidence that can shows that it can be interpreted and demonstrated on a plane. Using so a Anthony, now we're at two things, two things that you've just asserted that you now need to prove somehow. You no, asserted. That what you can see that? Polaris from the Tropic of Capricorn, and you've asserted yeah. that there is a machine out there somewhere, as something anti catharian machine that can map the way the southern stars work I didn't uh, say the stars. across the flat plane. I wish we didn't bring up the anti catharian machine into this, because what I'm going to assert, Josh, is that you don't understand what triangulation is, because you have to have one known distance in your triangle. Yeah, but hang on. It was into it was contrasting against the point that he countered against tri triangulation was that he didn't need to be in two separate points. And I agree with him. You don't need to be in two separate points for the point he's making. So therefore, the counter to his point is that it must be a ball. Let's what's the counter? The counter is well, th there is evidence that shows that it's not a ball, and it has been modelled using flat mechanical devices. So ultimately, it's like well, if it can be demonstrated and modelled using the alternative, then why would you presuppose either? No, you do have to be in two separate points to do triangulation. He's not because... arguing triangulation. He's but arguing. Anthony, Anthony, he's arguing this, well, he is arguing machine. triangulation. He's not. He's arguing Anthony, frequency. If this machine that you're talking about exists, why isn't it the main staple of the flat Earth argument? It is. Well, it, it's one of the arguments that's used. But... You don't even remember the name of the machine. No, I don't remember. The pronunciation is different. Well, I'm not. I'm not forgetting the name of it. I'm saying that I might mispronounce it, and don't shoot me for doing so. But the name of the machine is called the Antikythera machine. Shout out to Tony for the super chat. Much obliged. It says thanks for making the show interesting again. I've not done anything. A clock in the sky, and that clock in the sky is creating and reproducing the frequencies in which you claim that we would see the same thing twelve months later. Okay, I'll give you that. But that doesn't in itself prove anything. It can go either way. But this machine. Well, I, guess, I guess Anthony, if you, you should be able to link that right now, that that machine that you're talking about should be one of the main staples of the flat Earth argument, if it can show how the stars work. So because and, of your and, and, and because of your ignorance, you want me to go and get someone to prove my assertion without proving your own assertion first, right? You're making the assertion. You didn't even know the name of this thing. You've just dropped out oh, a, a knew, random no, no, couple no, no, of words. No, no, no. I knew the name. The machine is oh, real. there's a machine that back in the day used to be able to figure this out.
Anthony, this guy was just about to completely hang himself. I wish now we got to prove the Antikythera machine, which no, I mean, it's a historical he hope in all likelihood, but whatever. He hasn't produced any evidence for his position, right? So when a surgeon is not evidence. Is. That's the real problem. You can't do triangulation without one. Know me. He's not distance. arguing triangulation. Yeah, he's, he arguing, he's arguing for the point he's trying to make, or the point Nummy's trying to make, Anthony, is that. Josh has come in and asserted that it's a sphere and described a situation where he's measuring to two different stars that are in a triangle from his position. And in order to triangulate, you've got to have a known distance, which he doesn't have. So he's ultimately about to hang himself on his own evidence, which is what he came in with. Now we're on to a different point, which is equally valid, but just not the point that he was about to hang himself well, with. Okay. All right, so let's. He did say that he wasn't arguing triangulation. Now, no, he didn't. Let's... He brought up triangulation several times. I don't know how you can say that he's not arguing triangulation. I asked him to go through the logic of how he arrived at a globe Earth based on that observation, and then he brought yeah, up triangulation. He wasn't, tri he wasn't triangulating. So maybe I misheard and yeah. misunderstood his point. Let's ask him to clarify. So, what's your position, Josh? Is it triangulation you're arguing or frequency? Uh, yeah, no, I'd never said frequency. I'm not even any sure about that. What what I what the first thing that I said when I got here that you all agreed to was that if you sat on your comfy chair and looked in the exact same direction, you would see the exact same set of stars in exactly one year's time. So what? That doesn't prove we're on a sphere, Josh. That's our point. And when you tried to take us through it, you just asserted that we're on a sphere and that the stars were going underneath us. Just a presupposition. That you didn't Nathan, actually Nathan, link any Nathan, evidence to it. I tried to, to tell you. There was no logical the conclusion. Stars are different for me and for you tonight. When all you English people go to bed, we will see different stars. And it doesn't matter what they are because twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. It doesn't but so what? I keep saying it doesn't prove we're on a globe, Josh. It doesn't prove anything. Yeah, but Nathan, and, and this, sorry, this was my next sort of point or whatever that after you guys keep doing your long distance photography and you keep getting more and more and more and more, and that's fine. You've got a couple of like years left of content, I guess, just for that. At some point, Flat Earth has to actually try and make a model of how all the other stuff works. No, we don't. Models are pseudoscience and they are used when there is a limitation on a hypothesis. Pseudoscience models are absolutely not necessary for us to pummel the living daylights out of heliocentricity. I agree. We don't models need to are models are a models are religion. We don't need it. We don't, don't need. Okay, we don't need to okay, prove what the Earth is. Point again, and that's fine. We're getting off point. But again, could like could you name one thing, one single sticking point that is wrong with the heliocentric model? Just one. Don't kish gallop. One yeah, there's no observable curvature. Jupiter being no visible all year round when it should be on the other side there's of the no sun. Observable, the like, sure, you know what? No observable, observable curvature. Sure. We, the heliocentric world, and I'm pretty sure they'll all agree with you, we, you're not meant to see it because we're tiny and the world is huge. Yeah, and, but boats go over the horizon though, right? What's that? But we're tiny and the Earth is huge, but boats go over the horizon, right? Uh, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but here's the other thing. There's no evidence for any rotation, and there's lots of evidence for the fact that we're actually stationary. Yeah, but Nummy, that, that, that just sort of proves how stupid you are, because rotation's mm -hmm. got nothing to do with the shape of the Earth. That, what you're doing <laughs> is just walking down a completely stupid direction. Well, I'm not it's arguing the shape of the Earth. You said about a model, and I'm, we're, you're saying, what's the evidence against the model that we're being presented with? And part of the model we're being presented with is a rotating spherical Earth. The rotating part is actually really important to the model. So we've got about an hour left on this live stream. I hope you're enjoying the debate thus far. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. If you would like to support this channel, as Tony has just done, be sure to hit the super chat, which runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, or there's a link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. Most importantly, though, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below the video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. Massive thanks to all who have shared the show. Sharing the show increases the live audience, of course. 
and this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show if you've not done so already. As I say, there is about an hour left on this live stream. Globe, but now you're arguing that the rotation, which is what presumably would cause that to happen, has nothing to do with the shape of the Earth. So you kind you of know, put your you, you know what, Nami? I, I will totally agree to that. If we just snap froze time right now, snap frozen, everything in the universe has stopped moving. Based upon people sitting in their comfy chairs all over the planet would be able to determine that we are on a sphere. No, I don't think so, because nobody would see anything. We can't determine that we're on a sphere now, because we're not. There's not <laughs> the evidence doesn't support the idea that we're on a sphere. That's what we're arguing about. Right. You, you, there, there's nothing that you right. can actually right. have. You have no evidence of right. long-distance photography. Josh? The evidence is that no. it's missing evidence. Do you understand that missing evidence is an issue, right? And I'll give you an example, right? You live in Australia. When you look south, you see the southern rotation point, correct? Correct. To prove that we live on a ball, you would also need to see another observation point, either in Argentina or in South Africa, of south and seeing the same set of stars, but at a different point of rotation. And guess what evidence you guys do not have? Two observers looking south at the same time and seeing the same set of stars. For all we know, you could be looking what you call south and thinking you're looking at south, but actually you're looking at five o'clock on a clock and he's looking at seven o'clock on the clock and both or you're both being told um, you're looking south. And guess what? You've got an adjustment made to compass south because of something called declination. So where's your south? That's the first thing. That's an absence Look, of evidence, it, and you have it, something it's... called declination. So before you go on about the stars being anything, think about that point. Secondly, with regard to the stars, Polaris, you said you wanted to see evidence of Polaris being seen from somewhere other than the north but the, the north thingy. Nathan, would you mind presenting my screen, sir? No, Anthony, why would you say that, Anthony? You asserted that you can uh... see Polaris from the Tropic of Capricorn. Yeah. That's your claim. And then yeah. you just try to put it into my words and say, oh, something Polaris, you can see it from something, something. You, you said it. You said that you can see Polaris from the Tropic of Capricorn. Please show. Right. So present my screen, Nath. Yeah, you're on. <laughs> so I've got an article here from um, and it's some newspaper. I'll get you the citation afterwards, but I'll read what it says. It is sometimes very convenient to have a non de plume for this. For that. Hang on. Let's find the bit I wanted. Here we go. If to, oh, doesn't doesn't highlight. Uh, if Tamatia can look up to the the London Times of May the thirteenth, eighteen sixty two, in the Naval and Military Intelligence, he may read as follows: quote, On the nineteenth of April, in latitude twenty three, longitude thirty five. So, if you want to plot that on your belief model thing, go Google Earth. You could see that that's not going to be the equator. Captain Wilkins reports that the Southern Cross and the Polar Star were both distinctly visible at midnight. So the only way that that would be possible, according to your belief structure, is that you can see that on the equator and only on the equator. Would you like to plot 23 long uh, latitude and 35 longitude onto Google Earth and tell me where that takes you, roughly? Yeah, I'll do it right now. Well, what did you say again? So latitude. Latitude, latitude 2353, longitude 3546. Just go with 23 and 35. You don't have to be dead exact, but the point is, is it going to be on the equator or not? And we can tell by the numbers it's not. 23 north or south? Uh, well, I don't suppose it would make any difference. You've seen both of them, so you could plot it on both. But yeah, but you'd want to... <laughs> does it not specify? No, it doesn't actually. It doesn't say 23. It doesn't say plus or minus, or it doesn't indicate north or south. It just That's... says lat latitude 23.3. Three. It must be 23 in the north, right? Because otherwise it'd say minus 23, right? Is that right? Uh, no. Well, no, it'd just say 23 south, wouldn't it? Depends on which. I don't know. It depends on how they're organizing this, how they're, they're, they're representing it from the time, because this is in 1862. They might have had a different system in play. But okay, assume... so Anthony, I'll give you the opportunity just to back out right now. No, I want you to demonstrate it on screen. What is the latitude 23 on? On your globe model, where does it put you? Oh, I don't even know. Oh, good <laughs> I'm going to Google it or something, do I? Wait, Anthony, unfortunately. Say so, so that again. I said if we, if it doesn't specify north or south latitude, then it's but kind you of... You can hard. do both. Whatever. Yeah, do both. But the point how, is... How does... What? Do, what? If it's in, if it's in the north, it's in Saudi Arabia. 
Right. So in the north at Saudi Arabia, you can see the North Star and the Southern Cross um, distinctly inches. visible at midnight. So whatever the date and time was, this is being reported as evidence that, that really isn't supporting the, the ball model, because if it was supporting the ball model, you shouldn't really see either. What? No, uh, you, want? you understand, it is perfectly supporting the ball model, because as you How? said previously, the Southern no, Cross isn't. is not The only way a star it. observation is ever going to support the globe model is if you presuppose you're on a globe. We've gone through this with you. No, 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 oh, sorry, sorry, Nathan. Sorry, no, sorry. He doesn't give an explanation as to why you would see the, those two opposites at the same time, really. But Nathan, when they should the be internet. dead center at the horizon. So, have any explanation for that? Yeah, can we just one, can we just quickly no. for a for a second assume hey, that sir. everyone is in darkness, right? For some reason, the sun stops, and we are everyone on the whole planet is in darkness, right? Someone who's at the North Pole, directly at the North Pole, if they're looking straight up, they will see just Polaris. We all agree so far? Yeah. Okay, Okay. Yeah. good. And Can as some, someone who's down directly at the South Pole, they will be looking at Sigma Octantis. And sure, we can't see that with the naked eye. That's okay. But about 15 degrees away, they'll see the Southern Cross, which we can see all the time. So we're told. If... I live down here, man. I yeah, see it all the your, time. Your point was at the South Pole, right? No, no. What uh, I'm I, saying is that I, if two people from top to bottom of our planet started walking towards each other, they would see completely different star fields. And as they got closer and closer and closer and closer, they would start getting closer together. The star fields would start coming together, together, together. And then when they got to the middle, at the equator, they would both see the same star field. And, and I don't, Wait. I just, that only works on a sphere. That only works on a sphere if you presuppose you're on a sphere. Yeah, no, 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 no. What I've done is I've taken all the observations and it only ends up working on a sphere. It no. ends up working on a model of a sphere. Doesn't make the Earth that you stand on a sphere. I don't know how many times we've got to say it. You've not taken us through the logical connection between what you observe and that actually translating into <laughs> definitive proof of sphericity. It doesn't. You just said, well, it went underneath us because we're on a sphere. That, that's a presupposition, Josh. Well, I, 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 okay, Nathan. Okay, okay. I, you're right. I'm sorry. But why then? Why can't you see the Southern Cross at night? Too far away. Too far away. Yeah. Don't 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 and, really. And that's why, that's don't, why don't I can't really see Polaris at night. Anyway. Don't, it's not really necessary for us to even answer that because. Sure. I mean, it means nothing in terms of the argument sphere or globe Earth. But if you just want a simple answer, it's just too far away. But it has nothing to do with sphere or globe Earth, uh, globe or flat Earth. You're right, Nummy. Yeah. I think actually, and, Nathan, you got to get rid of this Nummy guy. He doesn't really help you very much. So I have a question for you. If you if you're so certain as to what these stars supposedly are then why when you go up really high why do the stars completely vanish from view why did even nasa footage that they use and while well, we are suspecting they are even doctoring uh, the actual sphere earth footage in some way but why do they never ever show stars why is there no star footage on the moon landing pictures where's there no star footage on the actual pictures of the earth and why do are there no stars visible in very high altitude balloon footage? Now, Arwen, do you actually want to know, or will you just start talking nonsense? Yeah, because if you that. actually want to know, it's because the atmosphere gets thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, and that tiny, tiny little pinpoint of light instead of it like blasting through millions of years of vacuum and light and space or whatever, instead of it being able to just zang straight into your eye, it, it doesn't have enough stuff to like hit on the way through. It's just so, tiny, tiny yeah, little That is light. the most nonsensical thing I've ever No, no, is he not so therefore far. proving that the ether must exist, right? No, he's talking that you can't see it without the effects of scintillation, right? 
Now, no, you know, seen... I don't know what that word, why you're saying that, but I'm just talking about the atmosphere, right? You, because, and I've heard you talk about this before. You can only see light, right, when it's interacting with something. Yeah, your so eyes. Exist then, your right? eyes. No, no, no. Well, yeah, but, but it's with yeah, something else. Yeah. Like, yeah, the light it, is traveling all the way across the universe from one super giant sun towards our Earth, and you're saying, oh, you can only see it when you're in the atmosphere. That makes a lot of damn sense, that it could actually travel through space, but while it's in space, you can't actually see it. Hmm. Yeah, basically he's saying that if there's no twinkling, that we wouldn't be able to see it, but the technical term for twinkling is scintillation. In the, in the field of astronomy and so you're you're saying that if it didn't if the that the pinpoint of light is enlarged by its interactions in all directions with the air and that's what makes it visible but that's actually really preposterous that really yeah, makes so why could you then still use telescopes like hubble up in space outside of the atmosphere to actually see all of that you know, you know that Hubble doesn't actually like try and record like visible light. Uh, maybe not Hubble, but you know, like the big major telescopes and trying to record any infrared light and they're so called in space. Any of them. Um, anyway, anyway, I got a bit sidetracked. Wouldn't really work uh, then, really. I've ever been to a gig, right? Like you've been to a gig. And uh, just a brief side note, I'm a lighting guy, right? I light up bands for a living. It's a rad job. But you guys have ever been to a gig and you see a beam of light coming down on someone. And you must know that there's a smoke machine, there's a hazer in the room that fills the room with particles so that you can see like a beam of light. Otherwise, the only way you're going to see a light is if it's pointing directly at your face. But if you're at a rock show... Is that show, what we're seeing? We're seeing the sides of the beams of light and that's what the star is? No, I don't think so. You're actually looking at the light source, according to the heliocentric concept. Yeah. You're but looking at looking the at actual the lamp. Source. You're looking, looking at the lamp, at not at some lit up atmospheric we're looking, beam. We're this looking at the light source coming through a whole bunch of particles of nitrogen and oxygen. When you look at the night stuff. sky, you don't see a bunch of beams. Stop being ridiculous. You see, you see the lights. You see the what? source, hey, whatever it well, may I, be. I, I, I never said that, Alan. Why would you just say that? I never said that. Well, you just brought it up. And it's ridiculous. No, I'm trying. I'm trying to make it easier for you to understand because obviously you're not oh, understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Can you. Can I only have so much ever trouble understanding your complete nonsense. But you <laughs> can only ever see light when it's directly entering your eye. Do you agree or not agree? Yeah. Yeah. You That's can only see light works. when you direct when it enters your eye. Yes. Light that does not enter your eye is not going to be something that you see. Okay, sure. So, if, if, the, if, there, if there is light, let's just say that we're looking off across a long distance, and there's a lighthouse way over there on the right, and it's pointing at a rock way over there on the left, is it possible that that rock can be lit up and you can't see the beam between the two? Is, is that a possibility? That's very yeah. unlikely. Actually. No, that's totally possible. Now, look, if you're very far away and there's a lighthouse, then there is a chance you will see the actual lamp because it has a reflector band. It's very strong. But things being lit up by that lamp at a very great distance, that not, that's not very likely, actually. It's that's a lot dimmer asked. over the distance. Think not what he asked, being, but the actual light source, you can see. That's so not what he asked, Erwin. You said, could you see the beam between the light source and the target object on which the light is falling? And I'm it saying, on depending on the conditions, if there's fog or some sort of particles, smoke in the air, something like that. It, it depends on the distance. If the distance is very fast, then it becomes increasingly more difficult to see things lit up, like the air, whatever it may be, mist, or even a, a target being lit up by the lamp beam. That's going to be a lot harder over distance. It becomes fuzzy, even in the dead night, even if there is no uh, not starlight or moonlight, it will become harder to see. But the You're actual source that. will be very visible much longer. Yeah, but Arwen, he's talking about being able to see the light beam from the side, right? That it depends not on how close you are. No, it doesn't depend on how close you are. It depends on if there's 
anything in the air for the light to reflect off. Yeah, but of. even if there is something in the air, then still depends on how close you are. Because if you're very far away, you're still not going to see that. You're just going to see a giant fog. Well, I think it has a lot more to do with the composition of the air than it has to do with distance. I'm not, I don't know. I don't, I don't see both. In any case, you know what? We've got sidetracked here because you still haven't explained to us the logic of how your observation from your comfy chair from year to year logic <laughs> uh, proves that we're on a globe. You still haven't, you still have avoided walking us through that. So I'm still curious to know how you've arrived at that conclusion from based on that observation. Because I think that's the important point here, right? Like you've claimed that you have proof of the globe. That's what we're always asking for. And when you come in and you've claimed that you've proved the globe, but you're not, but what you don't want to do is actually explain your proof. You're just like, yeah, sit in a chair one year and then come back the next year, same thing. Proof, that's a globe. But we don't understand. I don't understand how you're seeing that with proof. So I want you to explain to me all the logical steps in your own mind that make you arrive at that conclusion based on that observation. Okay, nummy, nummy. So you're in your comfy chair, right? You've seen these stars. And let's just say that your comfy chair is on top of your house and you can see the whole horizon. And let's just say as well that there's one particular star that is about one degree off the horizon. Now, if you, or actually, let's just keep you in the same spot, but you call one of your mates and one of your mates is down the road and he is, let's say, 100 miles away and he's in his own comfy chair doing the exact same observation. You guys aren't seeing all the same stars. He will see a little bit more on the horizon in one way and a little bit less on the horizon in the other way. Yeah, it's slightly okay. rotated. That's brilliant. Hold on, Arwin. So from there, how do we get to the sphere? You keep doing it, Nathan. You keep doing it. You, Sorry, yeah, that would just be the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again. We've done it. I've got you. Result. Yeah. Do you want me to repeat it back to you? I'm in one location, on a comfy chair, looking at a star. My mate's 100 kilometres away. He's looking at a star, but it's in a slightly different position, closer to the horizon, presumably, in your example. Got it completely. Now, how do I get from that to sphere? Uh, well, okay. Now, I mean, this is probably going to be a big stretch, but you need another friend. You need one more friend, another friend, another 100 miles away. Oh, and then let's 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 let, let's even say you like got you got people a all over the earth every hundred miles everybody's seeing uh, everything at a slightly different angular relation so what's your point now where do we get to the sphere uh, well because if you actually triangulated all of those comfy yeah, but you chairs, can't because you don't have any literal hold distance on arwin let's stars. just hear oh, him. Oh. arwin hold on let's just hear him say what he's got to say he is right, though. Yeah, but I want to hear. I want to hear Josh actually say it. Making this, he's just. I just want to hear his whole logic. I want to hear uh, the whole conversation of how he gets from these observations to this conclusion. Just... Uh, okay, sure, 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 sure. So, so we've made we've made our comfy chair moment, right? We've all and we've got our mate a hundred miles, and let's just say we started at the North Pole, and we're going a hundred mile increment down the zero latitude line whatever it is we're just heading towards the equator and then to the south pole all of us will keep seeing a certain set of stars but when we call our friends they're going to be saying oh no we can't see that oh what about that one can you see that big bright yellow one on the horizon he's going to say no i can't see that we got all that we, keep we got all that all from when that you explained it the first together. time sorry josh we've got all that we got it i repeated it back to you so oh, from sorry, there I... to sphere, where's the connection? Well, there's no other shape. There, There is actually... So in other words, you just have to presuppose you're on a sphere at that point. Right. So you're just saying there's no other shape. It can only be... Well, saying it can only be, that's called a presupposition. No, Nathan. Yet you're clearly an idiot, Josh, if you don't understand that by saying it's the only shape it can be... That is, by definition, a presupposition. 
Clearly, you are retarded if you don't understand that. Why am I wasting my time explaining this again and again and again? Saying it's the only shape simply means you are presupposing that to be the shape. There's no connection here between your crappy star observation and us actually being on a bloody sphere. You just presuppose it by saying it's the only shape it can be, man. Don't talk over him, come on. That's a bit rich coming from you, Arwin. No, he's right. He was doing what Rumpus does while Nathan's chatting. He's literally doing what Rumpus does in the background. It's not really acceptable. It doesn't Dan, understand what a presupposition is. If he's just going to say it's the only shape it can be, that is the definition of a presuppositional argument. It can only be that shape. So we're going to start with that shape then, right, moron? Well, let's get him. No, let's see if he can explain why that's the only possible shape. Because, <laughs> like, we could just keep we can just keep chasing this thing down to the molecules, right? Like, let's just see I where this goes. Awesome. Okay, so why not, why is the sphere I'm the? I'm not only saying possible? it's the only possible shape. I'm saying okay. it's the shape. Okay, the good. You just did. You just. So if it's not the only possible shape, then it is absolutely in no way proof of the sphere. Then, if there are other possible shapes that could explain this. Yes. Right, so why have you brought it up as a proof of the globe and asserted for the last half an hour that this proves the sphericity of Earth? Nathan, I'm not presupposing a globe. Yeah, by saying it's the only shape... You are dumb. You are literally thick. If you don't understand by stating that it's the only shape it can be, it means by definition we start with that shape. We presuppose that shape, you complete retard. No, Nathan, I didn't. I, I never said that. I ne yeah, you did. You said it's the only shape it can be. How deluded are you? I'm going to explain for the fourth time that if you presuppose that to be the shape by dis by saying it's the only shape it can be, it is by definition a presuppositional position to take. You're already asserting we're on a sphere. Nathan, don't do that moron thing. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not I'm not saying that I'm presupposing that. I'm saying that if we start taking observations, all we're doing is taking observations from our comfy chair at one moment in time. And when we map all of that out to trying to make heard this comfy four chair, times. it ends up being We've heard it four times and it proves nothing like we asserted at the beginning. Just asserting it over and over again. It's just why didn't I spot it the first time? Rinse and repeat. Just say the same shite five times like it'll actually mean language, something different. Language. Well, it is. It's the Josh, same rinse and repeat garbage question, over and over again. Josh. So we've got to the point yeah. that we've proved Please it doesn't do, prove the Nathan, shape. Josh, you have to presuppose it, which is the first thing I said to you, Josh. And you just keep saying, I sit in my comfy chair and I look at the stars. You're deluded. Right. Let me ask Josh a question. Um, you started off by saying um, if we take the observations of the stars... Let's start with a common ground that we can both agree on. Do you agree, yes or no, that the stars appear to slow down as they get towards the horizon? Uh, sure. Little, a, a tiny little bit. Sure. Now, is that consistent with the rotation of the Earth? Because if the, ro if the Earth was rotating, none of the stars would appear to slow down towards the horizon. Now, of course, if, like, because the rotation of the Earth uh, obviously is a rotation of the Earth. See, that's called a presupposition. You've done it again, Josh. Because of the rotation, that statement is a presuppositional statement. So you're already asserting that we're rotating. It seems clear that you don't understand what a presupposition is. Nathan, why aren't you yelling at Anthony right now? No, I'm yelling at you for saying because we are turning. That is the definition again of a presupposition. You are stating that we are turning. That is not the case. Now, if you're going to take us through some example of the stars being in movement because we are turning after declaring that we are turning, that's the basis of a presupposition. How many times have I got to say it, you dumbass? <laughs> Nathan, calm down. I'm not in the slightest bit annoyed, Alan. I'm just pointing out to a dumbass that he doesn't understand what a presupposition no, stop, stop, is. And he continually uses presuppositional arguments. No matter how many times I say to him that by immediately assuming your outcome and a statement like because we are spinning is an assumption of the outcome that is the basis of a presupposition 
Yeah, it's getting kind of tiresome hearing yeah. the same thing over and over and Having over to repeat again. the same crap to the same <laughs> idiots again and again. No, you're making the same thing. You're describing the same I things know. over and over again. Like, we don't understand. We do understand. You don't have to talk slowly. You don't have to uh, share it more elaborately. We get your point, and we're telling you why it doesn't make any sense because you're presupposing a lot. I get uh, hey Arwen, that's cool. And actually, I'm. I feel like I feel like I've gotten further with you than anyone else before. Because uh, last time we were talking about gravity, and you agreed with that. But anyway, I don't even want to go there. Gravi I, gra I, I agree to the downward acceleration force that I started. Yeah, with uh, wait, that, that was me who you were talking to when we came up with the downward acceleration force. How do you though reconcile the southern star rotation? How, do, how does that work in your brain? <clears throat> it's very simple. I, I immediately abandon all physical literalism assumption bias. <laughs> the heavens and say, hey, it is a, an optical phenomena and we see it as a globe over us and it has angular relations uh, in accordance to the position of the earth that has been well mapped out even by the ancients it looks to us like a globe spinning around us. It has nothing to do with the shape of the Earth. Now, this, though, Arwen, like, funnily enough, this is what I was talking about earlier, that flat earthers actually have no imagination. Because if you draw that to a logical conclusion, you have to assume that the Earth was created by someone to fool the entire population that they were on a sphere. Yeah, I agree to that. No, that's it's not true. That's that's I, I, Arwen. I, I love getting places with you, man. So uh, you nothing, actually nothing agree. has fooled you into thinking you're on a sphere. We just took you through the logic of it, Josh. It wasn't that you were fooled into believing that you were on a sphere. You presupposed that you're on a sphere. No one was fooled. You fooled yourself because you don't understand what presupposition is. No, I get his point, but he's getting philosophical about it. And uh, the point is it's ridiculous. very simple in my in my philosophical opinion. If we could just sidetrack for just a moment, then yes, the designer, the creator of this world, whatever this world may be, did design it to make it uh, not so obvious as to what it is to test us. Okay, let's not go there. There's no it's proof. Purely of philosophical. It has nothing to do with any yeah, science. And you know what? He's just trying to derail the conversation away from the fact that he cannot support his assertion that he made initially. Right? You Which mean is, you mean the assertion that Anthony made that he can see Polaris from the Tropic no, of Capricorn? No, no, that came afterwards when you asserted that you sitting in a lazy boy and then a mate sitting in a lazy boy, although that came afterwards, would in some way actually prove your presuppositional argument, and it doesn't. It, it totally does, Nathan. Like we we all just agreed that we can see the same stars every year from a comfy chair. Yes, we did. And all of those stars triangulate. At, to our comfy chair, oh, and if we triangulate all of them, triangulate. we end up on a sphere. Josh, that's it. That's Josh, it. you just used the word triangulate, right? This is where I agree with Arwin. If you're going to triangulate something, you need to know either their actual size or their actual distance, and you know neither. All you get is a scale. Are you? Okay, okay. So you're, you're trying to say to me that you can't triangulate yourself. No. You can and triangulate you, yourself you're gonna... on the Earth. I'm saying yeah. to you that if you're going to triangulate any of the one stars that you're pointing at and you're going to use your mate down the road to do so, to actually triangulate it correctly, you need to know the actual size or the actual distance because it depends on whether we're on a sphere or whether we're on a flat plane. It opens okay, up the I, angle. Let, can we just keep this super simple just for a second? Triangulate yourself. You, you, if you go down to the, the high street... brought up the word triangulation. And I'm going to keep saying it. But if you go down to High Street and if you point one, your left finger at, what do you got over there? You got boots? You still Unless got boots? you know the distance or the size, you can't triangulate. It stops the... No, it, what, yes. I, what are you even talking about now? We're you talking about triangulation and how it actually works. Triangle. Okay, why don't we pull up a definition of triangle? Can someone... Like we need know, to let him do it. Let him do it. He's the one that's using the word. Let him bring up the word, the definition for triangulation. Yeah. You show us where triangulation means something. That what you're saying. I I I'm I'm not even going to because that's I can't believe that you guys don't actually understand what I'm trying to say. 
I can't okay, believe someone's it. Okay, someone's got to do this then because we got to show this guy that he doesn't even know what triangulation is. Because I think this is your problem, dude. I think that you're, you've gotten confused about what you're observing because you don't actually understand what triangulation is. So, okay, if you, right now, no, right no, now, if you stand up in the middle of your room, just stand up, nummy num, and look in the middle of your room. If you look at the exact corner of your room, one of the, one of the corners, and then point your other finger at one of the other corner roof points in that room, there will only be one single moment in space and time where your angles of your fingers and your, your left, right fingers will be pointing to those bits. If you take one step in any direction, that will not be the same again. You follow yeah, what I'm saying. That's not triangulation. Yeah, you know what? Actually, no, me. now he said it like that, it's convinced me. Your room that you're stood in is absolutely spherical, no, me. <laughs> I actually think he's trolling. I don't think he's sincere. I think he's got Paul Voigt that, that's trained him, and I think he's literally trolling. Why did why do you guys go to that stuff so quickly? Because we we have a lot of experience with trolls, so we know what it we can we know it when we see it, right? I mean, we've given you more way more than the benefit of the doubt than you really deserve. But at a Gosh. certain point, we can just see when you, someone repeated themselves and they ref, you refuse to argue the logic. You refuse to like. Explain provide evidence of your argument and you ref and you refuse to show evidence of your assertion so that's but i just have one quick narrative. little moment one quick little aside and strategy to to the one quick to the aside to alan b alan b am i am i talking nonsense no they just argue from the point that everybody else is wrong and they've got nothing you, you're probably wasting your time so you yeah. think that the one so person do you agree with his description of triangulation I don't agree with anything you say, so... Oh, okay, so, the question now, right? so your position is that anything I say is automatically wrong, so if I say yes. it's wrong... Yes, you're, you're always wrong, you're rude, so rude? there you go. That's not rude. When have I ever been rude? Anyway? You were rude to somebody yesterday, you called them an idiot, you said they weren't an engineer, you called them a liar. Well, yeah. I was just you're stating rude. the facts, Alan. Sorry yeah, if you, No, rude. you don't know the facts. No, I do you know the facts. know the facts. Okay, well, I would be willing to bet that... Well, you made baby Jesus cry because you're a liar. <laughs> well... You're a liar. I'm. What have I lied about? You said he wasn't an engineer. Ignore him. No trolling you. That he wasn't. Just trolling this. Alan's trolling now. Picked up no, the really button. He's the resident, the resident troll. No, he's that guy's not an engineer because an engineer wouldn't because say... Because what? Something. You say so. No, because he, he didn't have the kind of basic understanding of the terminology of engineering. Who, who are you? Who are you to judge anybody? Well, I've done quite a bit of research on the topics that we You've are You've watched a few YouTube videos. No. That's as far as it goes. And I've read many books and I've watched probably over a thousand YouTube videos. On right. Did you say, who are Big you to tip. judge somebody? Get your free badge. Did you, you, was that your question, Alan? Who are you to judge? Yes. I'll really judge did. whoever I like. I'll judge you. I'm judging you right now. Judge me. Judge I am. Me, uh, that's Put precisely what I'm doing. I, I stated it before you asked me to do it. I stated that I was judging you and am judging you right now. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I, what I, are you going to do about you, it? The other point is, Alan, would you agree that in this topic we are our own judge? Correct. I'll judge everything around me to do with people, my surroundings, my earth. I'll be the judge, Alan. Yes, and you'll probably die alone. Uh, I'm married with a child, yeah. so I doubt I, that. I'll not die alone. There'll be rum, and me and Nathan will be sat there with drum and hookers and cocaine, and I'll be digging his hole if he dies. Okay. <laughs> there you go, Alan. Do you live alone, Alan? That yes. was actually pretty funny, Anthony. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> me yes. too. Alan, and how dare you call me rude? I'm not rude. I give well, to, be fair, to, me, to be fair, you were a little bit rude. I'll, I'll agree with Aaron, Alan on that Oh, God, this is going to descend Thank fast. I can just Thank sense you. it. That, that doesn't mean that I clash you as rude all the time, but on that one instance, he did cite some proofs that were credible, in, in my opinion. What's, on, what proof did he well cite done, that Alan. incredible? Are you well crazy? Well done, Alan. Mission achieved. There's no, he had absolutely nothing. The guy no, is not an engineer, Anthony. 
Yeah, but there were better ways to do it. You think that guy's an engineer who came in here and didn't know the difference between a volume and a surface area? You think an engineer wouldn't understand the difference between yeah, volume? The, and yeah, area? but that's the difference between a scientist and a technician, right? Or a, a, no. an engineer? No, no, no. No engineer would. No person would get past the first semester of an engineering program without understanding. How would you know? How would you know? That's probably a car technician or something. No, grease monkey. A car technician is not an engineer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so. I don't see what you're. I don't see what you're even arguing, Anthony. I'm rude for saying the guy's not an engineer when he's clearly not an engineer. He's lying. He's coming yeah, in. Well, saying, well, well, I'm let, let me explain. This let, might be an American English thing. But generally, we understand what rude is, and it's generally being quite curt. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you understand the same thing that we mean. But I'm with Alan. You were quite rude with him the other day, but that doesn't mean I think you're rude. I just thought that you were in that instance. I'm not being rude by stating the facts. Sorry. The guy, I'm just calling, calling a spade a spade, okay? I'm saying this guy comes in here, demonstrates that he doesn't have the understanding of the most basic level of terminology that would be required to be an engineer. You're, you're not to judge. You're not an engineer either. I am to judge. You're, you're not an engineer, are you? No, I'm not an engineer. And that's what, exactly what you the point. Hey, what up? Hey, sir. Hey, hey, sir. Don't get the guitar out. Oh damn it! Uh, well, yo, yeah. I, had, I, had a quick, I just wanted to point something out. Why? Right, why uh, wouldn't he get his guitar you know, out? I, I, let me get this right. Have you just judged him on his guitar playing ability? How no, dare you? you? Nathan, How Nathan, dare Nathan, you be so Nathan, judgmental? Nathan. How dare Nathan, you? Nathan, it's an honor. Thank you, Nathan. Joke. Get him. Get him, Nathan. It's an honor oh, running wow. joke. You wouldn't get it. So we can all be no, our own I judge, right, right Alan? Is that all cool, yeah, right? Check this out, though. Just to to make uh to make uh you know, to save face for the, the, the engineer chat. It's like, I know a guy who does shipping, where he maps shipping stuff, uh, like charts the courses. He gave me this great book that I have and I cherish dearly and he's a good friend of mine. The thing is, he, he like maps boats for shipping and he, he didn't know. He actually questioned me and wanted verification on whether or not we find our latitude based on the altitude of Polaris. Yeah, but he's and not so, a... Yeah. Well, now the point is that, like that, that to us because we're so familiar with the topic and all the rest, it's not part of his trade. So, like for the gentleman to have made the full pod the other day is is just a, I don't want to. I just wanted to make the point. And that's all I'm doing. I'm a little busy over here, um, but uh, but just that the gentleman, he apparently knows his stuff. And actually, he he came on uh, Flatten's Court and he had a good uh, we had a good discussion with him over there. So I think uh, just to be fair to the gentleman, he uh, he you know to call him you know just to say that. Some people who are in the field may not have the technical definitions. That's all. I just can't agree. And I think that, Anthony, it's actually rude of you to say that I'm being rude for calling out the facts. So I think... I'm not, by the way. And I no, think I'm just calling out I'm Anthony for calling you rude is pretty rude. You appreciate this accusation when I'm just stating the simple facts of the matter here, okay? It's Dude. not rude. Listen no. back to what you're saying. Yeah. We don't yeah. have to prove. No, it is not rude. For me to point out that, that the fact that the guy doesn't have a first year understanding of the subject that he claims to be and you're not yeah, an engineer, not, you can't it's judge it's not yeah, was, Nummy, what, are your, what are your qualifications Nummy right like you know how much you physics did you do in high school point. I don't even have any qualifications yeah, well, I, I, I don't know this. how to recognize All right, it so you guys, just to, keep it, you know, to keep it moving forward how come we could see this is something that always fascinated me we could see the southern crux from 26 degrees north latitude but how do we see it over the equatorial bulge it's fascinating when you look into it but with that gentlemen good day and i shall see you soon oh thanks isa for that number 26 degrees okay so it turns out that you can see crux which is the southern cross from 26 degrees north of the equator because crux is 26 degrees off the south celestial pole well, no, it's actually at 60 degrees. Well, you're, yeah, you're roughly at 60 degrees. Actually, it's at 60 degrees south. Uh, well, it's 30, Southern right? Crux is visible from... No, no, no. Er, no, it's visible at 60 degrees south, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, no. It's visible from everywhere south. No, no, no. Well, no, no. The, well, oh, forgive me. Yeah, but located like it's, it's in roughly what's considered off of the celestial sphere 60 degrees south. Right? Uh, uh no, no, I wouldn't go with that. It's quite near the center of rotation. I would have said no, it, thirty degrees. No, no, it's at sixty degrees. The thing is, is that degrees. zero is the equator. I said zero that right is the at equator the and it goes down to ninety, that's all. I did say that right at the beginning, it's about sixty or it might be seventy. Bless 
Ah, oh, Anthony. Did, um, but... did we give a shout out to the non-engineer, engineer, maybe an engineer, an orthodox? Because it'd be nice to actually get his name in as we've just spent 10 minutes talking about him. No, not, not really. But yeah, the guy we were talking about was unorthodox. That's the YouTube he was on yesterday. Yeah. And just to clarify, normally I didn't say that I agreed with Alan completely. I just said that some of the points that he brought up yesterday were fair. That doesn't mean I agree with him overall. All right. Like hey, some of the, some Anthony, of the Anthony have, you got the, have you got that like proof <laughs> of seeing the uh, Polaris from the Tropic of Capricorn yet? Because that's that's well, that's one of those things that like Eric Dubay says, and and that's that's a big deal. Okay, you like, you can't just well, reference you go, you've got your Eric own evidence. Dubay. You know that it's there. Why are you asking me for it? <laughs> You're the one making the claims here. I just counted with there are reports that I didn't what? say that you no, could. I, hey, I whoa, said there are reports whoa. that. What? No, no. What you said? I, I said you said. Reports. I said there are reports that uh, Polaris can be seen as far south as the Tropic of Capricorn. That appears Anthony, to be true. Don't make me cut this, go back through this whole thing and find don't the spot it. that you said don't that and make a video of you That's what I said. It. There are reports that. That's what I said. Whether right, so you don't much. believe it then? I don't know. I don't know what's true. But you're going to claim it, even if you don't believe it. There Is are that reports that. What's that drunk Australian guy who comes on here sometimes? What was? No, 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 was the the, the Glober guy, the really oh, drunk guy. Oh, Jazaconda. Oh, oh yeah, this I think this guy Josh is 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 actually the sober Jazaconda. No, I think he's sober for Insults again. Or yeah, hey Nummy, have you ever said anything smart in your life? <laughs> Go on, right now. <laughs> say one, one smart thing. thing. Where you get, can also get very rude. No, 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 just go, annoying. just go, Nami, right now, say something smart. Just an exhale of air, oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, you don't need to patronise him, he is plenty of smart. What are you doing sticking up for him, Arwen? Hey, I will criticise him, but I will also give compliments where compliments are due, and Nami is pretty smart. Hey, you've never given me a compliment once, are we? What's going yeah, on there? Because you're an idiot. Hey, no. Hey. <laughs> no, 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 you're that great. Is, no, that is pretty right, funny. Arwen. But hey, Arwen, could you step in for him? Could you say, could you quote for me now one smart thing? One thing that you've heard Nummy say that you like agree with and you think, hold yeah. On, he... Yeah, Nummy is good people, man. Nummy is good people and he's actually made real heck, like, great inquiries and he has a great, uh, he has a good eye for a lot of things. I may disagree. Okay, I said, bam, but firing no, no, line. Good people, you no, you good say people. it, man. Tell me one thing that he said to you that you thought, man, that was smart. Uh, Sound I effect that, I've, been, I've been impressed for me. about the way I've been impressed on, on uh, private calls looking at uh, footage with Nummy. And I've been impressed with Sound effect is evidence. That's good enough. Well, no, 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 no. But aside, I'm not going to get into don't that. Don't even take debate on this. Who cares? I'm saying, I, I've had so, great why are we into this? You're just pandering to his ad hominem. Worthy of the discussion. So. Big up well, to Nummy, man. You, a... But, you know, we don't even, we don't need to go here with this guy. He's just dodging. Well, I want That's you to know, Nummy, too. No, what? no, this is part of the usual cycle. We've gone from crap evidence to be, being absolutely pummeled to ad hom attacks now with, you know, we've got Alan uh, fanning the flames. It's just crazy. <laughs> hey, Mike, how are you doing? Hello. Hello. Good to have I you. I love all these people, including Arwen, however much he, you know, wants, needs to... <laughs> He uses me. I like Arwen because he's always right. Yep, me too. What's up, Arwen? Or, uh, Alan? Hi, sir. Get in the sea. <laughs> what? <laughs> Overboard. <laughs> I love y'all. Be back. Bless, I'm, man. Still no, you're good. To, yeah. I'm still learning to participate in this kind of a forum because I find it, you know, a challenge. I think it's a skill to, to, to uh, have a discussion in a group online that it's not like having a normal conversation. You have to learn the, you have to learn the dynamics of it. And it's quite different. And so you know, I'm hey, still just hey, trying to find. Hey, so. say something smart. Uh, everything I said is everything I say is smart. All right. Nah, not uh, everything. Like, not most of the things you say are smart. Not most things I say are smart. No. no, I said not everything, but most of the things. Oh, okay. And I really liked your uh, your digging work uh, into uh, diffraction 
what you posted in uh, the masturbators chat was very interesting, although it was very late for me, so I didn't really respond to all of it. Yeah. But uh, Nami brings up really good research all the time. Could, could, could someone stop giving me just um, uh, examples of him doing it and actually give me an example of Gosh. him doing no, it? Let's, can we just Gosh. stop playing this silly Gosh. game? Who Gosh. cares? Josh. Alan, Alan, Alan. Josh, you just Alan. lost Josh. a huge Josh, you just Josh. lost a huge argument. Alan. Josh. Alan. Josh. Okay, these Alan. guys are mining. Josh. Right. You have anything more constructive to add, Josh? Josh, or... you should look Josh. into um Nummy's research into CGI Ospreys. It's amazing. It is amazing. I'm very proud of it. But anyway, Josh, I want to tell you something. I just owned you in a in a big debate. You know? <laughs> So, <laughs> when, 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 was I there? No, you haven't said one intelligent thing since you got on here. Not even one. All you've said was completely silly nonsense, and you've absolutely refused to back up anything that you've said. So yeah, I'm not the one who needs to defend my intelligence here. You are. You just yeah. You, you just don't got, even know how triangulation works. You have a lot of presumptions about spheres. You don't know um, what triangulation it. is. You don't even know what triangula triangulation is, and yet you're citing it as evidence. So I'm just saying, I'm not the one who needs to defend my uh, intelligence quotient. I mean, you don't. It all turns out that you guys don't think that triangulation has anything to do with triangles. And that's your problem, not mine. Uh, your oversimplified <laughs> approach proves that you don't understand it at all. Because we've been trying to explain to you what makes triangulation triangulation, and you haven't given us any kind of response that proves that you even understand what we were talking about. Didn't no I confirmation? Give you you're just Didn't rambling on, regurgitating the, the same straw man nonsense. Basic sitting in a comfy chair, pointing your fingers at stars responses. Yeah, isn't it's that, very isn't nice it, story, but it doesn't really prove that you really understand it. Was that too simple for you? It was too simple. You couldn't quite get it because no, it was it doesn't have any easy. valid content. It's just a story. Right. Can, can I just uh, object? Ar you know Arwen, can I just get you quite quickly? You agreed early on, very early on in this debate, that sitting in the chair... Here we go. Rinse and repeat time. So we're going to hear for the fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, that if we sit in a comfy chair and we look at the stars only for us to take you through it again that it's a presuppositional position that you're taking with absolutely absolutely no logical steps made to actually connect this to us being on a sphere oh nathan are you coming in to save arwen because you know that no, he can't no, no, no i'm not coming in to save arwen i'm saying that you are rinsing and repeating the same garbage for about the sixth time on this show it doesn't matter how many times you repeat the same crap it's not going to make any sense in terms of the sphericity it's not proving could I ask a question? Go ahead. Uh, I was just wondering why on the equator, if you're looking out, you see Polaris and it's on, it's literally on the horizon. But when you go to the North Pole, it's straight above you at 90 degrees. Uh, I have an explanation for that, but do you guys? Yeah, it's sorry. Your... Who's going to the North Pole now? It doesn't matter who, it's common knowledge. I'm sorry. Did you say you'd been to the North Pole? Cool. No, I don't. So what's this common knowledge thing that you're talking about? Hi, Tim. Do you know what common knowledge means? Yeah, I understand that people yeah. often assert that if you go to the North Pole and lie on your back, that Polaris will be above you, but no one's actually ever done it that I've spoken to. So that's why I'm asking if you've done it and you're telling me it's common knowledge. Well, it does seem to be that the North Pole star is a little bit higher up when you go to the northern regions of, say, Norway, northern Russia, uh, those areas, Canada. It, it, it does get up higher. What is so weird is that Arwen is, in terms of how insane that man is, he is the most sane person uh, on this planet. Yeah, uh, wow, it's... <laughs> Such an important judgment, man. Right, Josh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a link that's in the side chat, and what I want you to look at is the trigonometry point that was brought. You up muffled, in it. Anthony. Wait. Pardon? I can hardly hear you muffled. You oh. muffed, Tony. You muffed. I'll come back one sec. Hey, I don't really know how to do that either. I don't know about side chats and things. 
Yeah. But anyway, I explained to you with a different approach. It doesn't presume the Earth is a sphere. Why oh, all those elements would be. And that is that the globe of the heavens is a globe that is observable at the edge of vision in relation to the observer for each observer on the world, whatever its shape may be. And it has very specific relations, angular relations to the position of the earth. And that is, if you go north, go to the anti-equator in the north, then Polaris will be above you. If you go to the equator, then it will be roughly at the horizon. And that's it. Doesn't prove the shape, just proves no. the global I, I, I would, like You've got two points of data right there. What you got to do is fill out all the points of data in between. Right. Could I have like the academia? No, or... I don't like to fill in blanks with unknowns and presumptions. Right. So just, Did wait, I say that? Just said that. Right? What, what I'm saying is make observations in between those two points. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, you can see all these things. It's really interesting, but I'm not going to draw presumptuous conclusions from those. No one's saying draw presumptuous conclusions. That was all you. You just said them. What what you could do is you're, you're up in the Netherlands or something, right? You could go as far north as you can and you can see where Polaris is and figure out, like, find out the angle off the horizon it is. And then you can go as far south as you can. You don't ever even need to leave Gosh. the landmass. Yeah, I know, because there's a very specific angular relation of the position of the globe of the heavens and the position what on the that? earth. What is the so globe you of believe the there's a globe of the heavens? Yes. Where can I read about this? Night to the globe yeah, to of vision. The it's very visibly like a globe. Gosh. Anthony, thank you. Please save me. I've just sent you a link in the side chat prior to me um, reloading. What you need to do with regards to the triangulation point that you keep mentioning is watch that video because what it nicely does is makes the point that Red's rhetoric makes that he makes the same point that you do. That is, you can prove anything by like looking at the, the moon in this case it was by triangulating your position, which is essentially your position, right? You're saying that about sitting in your armchair and getting your mate down the road and doing the triangulation. But if you make the maths change the math that we're not on a sphere yeah no Anthony, on a I, I, i'm so sorry i don't mean to cut you off but you keep you, you did this to me like an hour ago you were trying to make it out that i was saying that the base points of the triangle were me and myself somewhere else on the planet me and my mate or something that's not what i was saying it, was it wasn't saying, what you were saying you were talking about your mate down the road and the different uh, different positions no, I was saying that I am one of the points of the triangle. And if I use my left finger and my right finger to point at two stars, we can make a triangle. Ooh. And we triangulate to my comfy chair. Yeah, yeah. but you can well, only not do it get with one eye closed, closed, can't you? Because there's something like 3D. Yeah, but you're not going to get any of the distances because you need to know three of the. I don't know. Need... Any, I, I don't need to know any distances. Yeah, I you like, can't triangulate. Yeah, you do. All you, you guys, all you, you guys have been talking about distances, dude. That's you not, get three angles into a triangle. It doesn't give you the size of the triangle. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible, and of course a huge, massive. <laughs> A huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. If you've not done so already, be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!